So we raised our angel funding, took the money and ran out of the city. Poof, we were gone. No, we actually moved out of the city. It was one very big and tough decision that was the right one for us. We had been sitting at CBS in a community with other startups. And while we enjoyed their company, we saw that a lot of our day became about socializing with other startups. But the other startups, they're not our clients and they're never gonna be. Um, so we made this decision to move out of the city and get a very big office in a beautiful old uh, army barrack um, and signal to the market that we had grown up. Get an office that was big enough to hold conferences and events. So uh, I remember we signed the lease and I was quite nervous about the price point because it was on the pricey end of what we could afford. Um, we got the key and then we had this big, beautiful office. At the time, there were three of us and there are eight rooms. It was 250 square meters. Um, and then we thought, wait, wait, we, we don't have money to decorate it. Uh, we're going to have to fill it with furniture. And then Chris and I went home to our house um, and then we took all the nice things from our house. We took the art off the walls, took the chairs and the tables and everything, and we made it into a very, very beautiful office. And I think this was a very deliberate decision that was the right one for us, but that made people wonder, and they thought it was kind of crazy. Why aren't you showing up to all the startup events? Um, why are you becoming a part of big corporate HR networks instead? Um, but for us, we knew that our clients were enterprise clients and that they would want to come to an office where it signaled that we had grown up. So when people come to our office, they say, wow, this is a beautiful, nice office. You guys must be doing really well. People also used to say we're the best dressed startup uh, in Denmark because all of us wore suits. Um, and it was a part of this story that we crafted about a software that is beautiful, intuitive, young, um, with a little bit of an edge. So we, we incorporated and encompassed that brand from end to end in everything we did, whether it's a presentation, whether it's the software, whether it's how we look and the way the office looks. I think when you are part of a startup, you tend to want to really uh, be around other startups. Um, but I think it's a little bit dangerous to spend your time overemphasizing the community of the startups if the startups are not your clients. While everyone else went to Coffee Thursday, we became a part of the Confederation of Danish Industry, an, organ an organization that introduced us to all the HR managers in Denmark, a place where we got to meet all the CEOs of successful tech companies, where we got to meet them and form relationships with them as clients and mentors. So they, you know, by, by really becoming active members of communities where our clients are, and also communities that are at the core of our business, which is learning and which is HR, we began to build a professional brand and people began to trust us. People began to want to hear our opinion about what is the future of work? What is the future of learning? How does Canopy Lab view, uh, now that there's a corona pandemic, how will the future of school be changed due to this uh, pandemic? So instead of becoming this fixture in the startup community, we became a household name in the business that we want to sell to. So my key pieces of advice today is grow up, be mature, decide what kind of brand you want to build and then walk the talk. You are in control of your narrative and it will be shaped by all of these factors.